Hey, Grandpa. Hey, uh, so it's time for your Jello. I just want to remind you, you can't have tapioca again, okay? You're taking it away from all the other guys, all right? So, what, what do you think about cherry? You have chosen poorly. Uh, we also have butterscotch, I think. You have chosen poorly. All right, fine, fine. Tapioca again. God. Ah. You have chosen wise. What's up and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars, where today I am joined once again by Rashad of Rashad G Reviews to talk about the final film in the original Indiana Jones trilogy. It's Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade takes Indy and his merry band of misfits on yet another adventure, this time to find the Holy Grail foretold to give those who drink from it everlasting life. He agrees to take the mission because his father, who was looking for it first, has gone missing. So off Dr. Jones goes to battle more Nazis on his way to find another item of biblical importance. First of all, huge shout out and thanks to Rashad for being in another review. We'll be hearing what he has to say in just a hot second. But first, I kind of want to quickly go over the things that I think are phenomenal here. I think for most folks, most folks, you don't count Rashad, uh, it's always a battle between which Indiana Jones film is better? Is it Raiders or is it Last Crusade? That's a tougher question than you'd think because both films operate incredibly similar. They're almost mirror images of one another in a way, so it really is hard to decide. Both films are about looking for a biblical item. Both feature Nazis, incredible action, and an adventure like no other. But watching this back, I'll go ahead and say that Raiders is definitely the better film, and I'll try to explain why. Rashad will even mention this in a little bit, but Raiders had more iconic moments. From beginning to end, that entire film is just littered with scenes that are truly unforgettable. While Last Crusade, honestly, the only thing that I personally remembered verbatim was essentially the last scene. That entire scene is honestly one of my favorite moments in Indiana Jones altogether. If I had to pick my favorite film based off of a single scene, it would undoubtedly be Last Crusade. But when you start talking about everything else, Raiders works better as a bigger picture. But that's not to say that this film is any bad. Not at all. The reason why it's so hard to decide which film is better is because they're both great. Heck, they almost tie each other in my scores because of that. What really makes this film special is the inclusion of Sean Connery as Indy's dad, Henry. He brings a lot of humor and heart to this film, and I personally think out of every companion that Indiana Jones has ever had over the years, Connery was probably the best when it came down to chemistry, while Marianne comes at a close second. Other than that, this film's adventurous flair was honestly top notch. Something was always happening and there was never a dull moment. Plus, it really felt like Indiana was constantly uncovering a trail of clues, kind of like how, you know, Nick Cage would do in the National Treasure series. Now, before we go any further, let's hear a word of what Rashad had to say about The Last Crusade. Take it away, man. David, what's the deal? Pickles is everything kosher, so I guess this concludes our Indiana Jones trilogy review. Unless you invite me back to do four, I'll accept the challenge. You know, I, I'm not I'm not one to shy away from a challenge. As much as I hate that movie, I watched it only once. I'm open to check it out again and review it with you, if you choose to do that. But if not, I won't twist your arm. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. This movie brings back a lot of fond memories because I know this is going to show my age. But that was a bomb ass summer. You talking about Last Crusade, Batman, Honey I Shrunk the Kids, The Abyss, Jason Takes Manhattan, <laughs> Elm Street 5, Dream Child, Lock Up with Sylvester Stallone. This summer could do no wrong. And Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade is probably the most successful out of all those movies named besides Batman. I think Batman's number one, the Indy's number two. I'm not sure about that. Double check that, man. I think. Yeah, it wanted to. Anyways, fuck it. I went to go see this, right? I'm a nine-year-old kid now. I'm going to be transparent with you. Because, David, I don't know if you know this story. But um, I'm a nine-year-old kid. Me and a group of friends, we went to go to the, the cinema to see Last Crusade. And 
end up about, I say, maybe 15 minutes into the movie, we all got bored. We're like, this is boring. We don't want to, huh? Okay, so we snuck out, and two doors over was Jason Takes Manhattan. <laughs> so we walked out of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, a classic action joint, and we went to go see Jason Takes Manhattan. Even to this day, Last Crusade is probably my least favorite of the Indiana Jones movies, but it's still a great time. So I didn't appreciate this movie until I got a little bit older. I think I was probably like, you know, in my teens, and I watched it. I said, you know, this movie's actually not bad. And as the years went on, the movie got better and better to me. And there was even one point in my life where I said, I might like this better than Raiders of the Lost Ark. But now as an old man, I watch all three movies, and Raiders, you know... Last Crusade probably has better action. It's probably more entertaining, you know, even on the on the humor side. I think it's the most funniest. I think Last Crusade is the funniest of the three, but Raiders just had too many iconic moments. I, I, I can never put this over Raiders, even though it probably was a little bit more entertaining. But, yeah, I, I can't top it over Raiders and definitely not over Temple of Doom, which on a lot of people's lists, including yours, David, is the weak link, is the black sheep. But I love it. You know what I mean? This is it's the least Indiana Jones movie out of all of them. But Last Crusade definitely follows the Indiana Jones formula. And it works out to the T. But now, the flaws that I have with this movie are uh, the villains. I think the villains sucked. Even Elsie is... It, is it Elsie or Elise? I think it's Elise. <laughs> Why am I so bad with names? I don't know. But yeah, Elise is fine as she was. Because she was fine. But as a villain, I was like, eh, okay. And then the main villain, uh, what the hell was his name? Donovan or something like that? Very forgettable. The story overall did not really get me, you know what I'm saying? But with that being said, those are just like small gripes I have with the movie. But I gotta say, the dynamic between Indy and his pops, played by the late, great Sean Connery, stole the movie. You know what I'm saying? Because of their chemistry together and the story that Spielberg put together with these two made it worth the price of admission even if you take all the action out of this movie if you just have those two together scene for scene it would still be a dope ass movie even if you take the action away you know what i'm saying i just love seeing sean connery and harrison ford together i think they absolutely killed it and probably the funniest moment of the movie come to think about it when they're in the plane they're the, during the plane uh, chase sequence and <laughs> and sean connery has the gun and he turns it and blasts the back of the plane out Looks at Indy like, oh shit. Indy's like, yo, Pops, man, you good back there? He said, son, they got us. <laughs> he trying to put it on the Nazis. The tank chase sequence, I think, rivals the truck chase and Raiders. I said rivals it, but that truck uh, chase, you know, you, you can't top that. But still, it came damn close. And it was funny because when the tank went off the cliff and they're all looking and Indy comes like, hey, what did I miss? And he was like, you know, I, I thought I lost your boy. That was a very heart-touching moment when, you know, they, they embraced and, you know, Pops thought he lost him. But with Indy and Pops, the relationship that they had, it mirrored Spielberg and his own father. You know what I mean? So I think that's why this movie had as much heart as it did because Spielberg put a lot of his personal life in here. You know what I'm saying? So wrapping this up, uh, David, I really had a good time with this, this series. Last Crusade, dope, on point, funny. Like I said, the funniest one of the three. But I got to put this at the bottom of the three. But I love them on their own way. You know what I mean? So Raiders, I believe I gave an A plus two. I think. Temple of Doom definitely gets an A plus, And I would give this a solid A. Solid A. So there you have it. So not to take much more of your time. I know that you're going to go more into this. Oh, and by the way, shout out to River Phoenix who played young Indiana Jones. Killed it in that opening sequence with the animals on the train. I thought that was dope. Rest in peace. What could have been a great acting career, man. Damn. You know, gone too soon. Yeah, rest in peace, River Phoenix. But yeah, A is what I got for Last Crusade. So David, thank you once again. The floor is yours. Take it away. Thank you once again to Rashad for joining me in today's review. I have left a link to his channel in my description box below for you all to check out. Give him some love. Tell him I sent you. First and foremost, yes, Rashad, you have been formally challenged to join me again for Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And yeah, I think for the most part, this entire trilogy we've more or less agreed on other than Temple of Doom. You nailed it when you said that Raiders has more iconic moments, so you can't put Last Crusade over it in a ranking. That makes sense. A lot of this film I've forgotten about over the years, and I've seen it several times. There's no reason for me to have forgotten so much about it, but here we are. I only remembered patches of the film. I remember the tomb in the library, I remember the rescue of Henry Jones, and literally anything and everything regarding the last scene. 
Everything else was, you know, it was fine. You know, it had really great action and everything, but not too dangerously memorable. And the more memorable it is, obviously, the more nostalgic. Let's go ahead and break down my final score. From an unbiased technical perspective, this film is made just as well as the first, or second of that matter. Great cinematography, great editing, great music. Basically, it feels like Indiana Jones should feel, which is phenomenal. The delivery and the performances of these actors are on point. It's one of the better third films in a trilogy. This unbiased score is 94%. What about my bias score? Well, this is where that feeling comes in where I didn't think that the entire film was as memorable as the final scene, right? It's still a great movie, but it's not as iconic most of the time. Most of the time. So that's why this score is a little bit lower at 90%. And when we average out the two scores together, we come to the final rating of 92%. 92 out of 100 possible stars, or an A- minus letter grade. It's definitely a fantastic film that's worth the watch, made even better still by a very relatable and exciting plot. If you haven't seen Last Crusade, this thing is historic and worth the watch. Anyways, Rushad, thanks one last time for being in this video, everybody. Remember, check out his stuff. As for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Let me know which of these original trilogy films are your favorite. After that, go ahead and hit that like, subscribe button, and bell to be notified when I come out with my next review. And until then, peace out. Dave examines movies. We just watch for fun. Davey is the expert. He is the number one critic that I go to when I need a movie pick. Thanks for joining up with us.